Hey guys, hope you're well. So in this lesson, we begin talking about periodicity. What is periodicity? Periodicity is just a fancy way of saying that um, the periodic table has patterns. Okay, so what scientists have observed is that if you go um, across, for example, this period, remember period is when you go horizontally, so this period over here, um, if you look at the patterns that you would see with the atoms, we're gonna look at different types of patterns. For example, we're gonna look at the pattern of radius. Then what they have found is that that same pattern will happen to the row below and the row below, and each row will have the same pattern. So they're trying to tell us that the periods, which is the rows, have patterns. Okay, so what we're gonna look at in this lesson is radius. What is radius? Well, if you have an atom, the radius, just like a normal circle, is the distance from the center to the outside. So it's how big is the atom? So this atom would have a large radius, this atom would have a small radius. That is what we are looking at in this lesson. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take lithium, beryllium, and boron, okay? And we're gonna draw their atoms. So for lithium, we know that it has a, um, it's got a nucleus. Now the atomic number is three. Well, let's actually quickly um, remind you that the atomic number um, for lithium is three. So that means that it has, um, it would also have three protons because remember the protons has the same, it's the same as the atomic number. And then let's just pretend that we're looking at neutral um, atoms. We're not looking at atoms that have a positive charge or a negative charge. So the number of electrons would also be three. Three positives and three negatives, okay? Now, can you remember when we looked at electron configuration? You know where we went 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, all of that. Well, can you quickly do that for lithium? Maybe just pause and just see if you can remember how to do that for lithium. Now, if you've done this for lithium, you'd know that, okay, so we start in row one and we enter block S and we cross off one and two. Then we go down to the second row, which, um, and then we start with block S, but we only cross off one electron. So this is the electron configuration, okay? What this tells us, if you look at the largest uh, row number, it is a row two. What that means is that if you had to go and draw lithium, so if you had to draw lithium with its nucleus, um, it would have three protons, and then it would have two rows of, or two energy, or two, yeah, two energy levels going around the nucleus like that. So there's two of them because of that number over there. So you would get some of the electrons would be in the first row, and then some of the electrons would be in the second row, okay? Or the second energy level. So if we had to go and quickly do that for lithium, just draw it out, um, for, we're gonna look at lithium, beryllium, and then we're gonna do it for boron, which is this one over here. Can you see that all of them are gonna end up in row two when you have to do the electron configuration? They would all end up in row two, right? Um, lithium, if you wanna just practice this, lithium would be 1s2, 2s1. Uh, beryllium would be 1s2, 2s2. And then boron would be 1s2, 2s2. And then you'd enter the P block over here and it would be 2P1. So they all, the highest energy number is a two for all of them. So if you had to go draw each of them, they would all have a nucleus. So let's go draw three nuclei. Okay. And lithium is going to have three protons. So I'm just going to say um, plus three. Uh, beryllium is going to be atomic number four. So it's got four protons. And then boron is atomic number five. So it's got five protons. Okay. Now for each one, I'm going to draw two rows because they all have a highest energy level of two. Okay and then this one is also two, and then this one is also two. And then all the electrons would be um, on the outside, okay? S stuck in between those energy levels, for example. So what I wanna show you now is that electrons are negative. We know that electrons are negative, right? So, and, and we know that the nucleus is filled with protons. It also has neutrons, but those don't have any charge. So can we agree that the, 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 the overall effect of the nucleus is that it's positive? Yep, it's a positive charge. So I want you to think of this, these nuclei 
as this like big powerful machine that's got this positive magnetic charge and it's busy um it's busy pulling on all of the electrons that are going around the electrons are like going around here for example okay um, and those electrons are negative so they would be attracted towards the positive um nucleus which is filled with protons so this one over here boron has five protons so it has a much stronger attraction force or this this part here is more positive so it would be able to pull its electrons much more strongly towards itself so it's going to pull the electrons towards itself so what we would find is that the overall size or the radius of boron is going to be smaller than beryllium which would be smaller than lithium does that make sense let me explain that again we know that on the outside there are electrons which are negative these are all negative electrons now they are negative whereas the protons on the inside they are positive so what do opposite charges do they attract they pull each other they pull towards each other so this proton or these protons are busy attracting all of these electrons towards the center but because this one has five protons it will be able to pull more strongly on these electrons because it's got five positives whereas these ones only have four and three okay makes sense so as we go um as we go across from left to right the amount of protons increases here you go from atomic number five then you have six protons seven protons eight protons nine protons and so as you go from left to right your nucleus which is the part in the middle is becoming more powerful because it's got more positive charge as it becomes more powerful it can pull the electrons more closely towards it and so the radius becomes smaller so we would expect lithium to be the biggest and then beryllium would be a little bit smaller boron would be smaller than that carbon would be smaller than that nitrogen smaller than that oxygen smaller and fluorine the smallest and then we don't really include the noble gases when we're busy doing these types of periodicity noble gases are pretty boring they don't do anything they don't really react um so we don't really include them in too many of our discussions okay so does that make sense as we go from left to right in a period the radius becomes less okay so let's make a note about that and then we're going to look at what happens when you go down a group so as you move from left to right in a period the number of protons increases which causes the nuclear charge or the nucleus charge which is the part in the middle right the nucleus is the part in the middle to become more positive a more positive nuclear charge will exert a larger attractive force on the surrounding electrons this causes the electrons to move towards or let's say uh, to be pulled to be pulled towards the nucleus which causes the atomic radius to decrease so what we can summarize in like a one liner is that when moving from left to right in a period the atomic radius decreases okay now we're going to look at what happens when you go um down okay so now we're going to look and see what happens when you go um downwards because now something else is going to happen so what we're going to do is we're going to look at lithium um sodium and potassium okay so lithium uh sodium and potassium now straight away some of you might say kevin potassium has the most protons it's got 19 protons whereas sodium has 11 and lithium has three 
So because of what you just told us, doesn't that mean that potassium will be the smallest because it's got more protons? And the answer is actually no. That argument that I just told you guys only works when you are in the same period when you're going across. I'm gonna show you why now, but that argument does not work when you are going down. The extra protons does make a difference, but there's something else that we need to talk about that makes an even bigger difference. So the big thing we're gonna look at now is when we looked at the electron configuration of lithium, we got 1s2 uh, and then 2s1. I want you to quickly do sodium. If you wanna just pause, you can try to do the electron configuration of sodium. What you should find is that you start at row one and you enter the S block and you block off one, two. Then you go to row number two, okay? So that becomes a two and you enter the S block. So that's gonna be a S block. And then you're gonna block off one and two. Then you enter the P block where you block off one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you go to the, th um, the third level where you enter the S block and you just block off one. Okay, so that's what you should have gotten for sodium. Well done if you did. And now what I want us to do is just do potassium, okay, which is this one. So you're gonna enter at the, and potassium is over here. So you're gonna enter at the first um, row where you're gonna have, um, I'm gonna run out of space. So you're gonna have row one, um, you're gonna enter the S block and you're gonna do um, two electrons there. Then you're gonna go to row two where you're gonna enter the S block and you're gonna block off one and two. Then you're gonna enter the P block and you're gonna block off one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you're gonna enter row three and you're gonna block off one and two. And then the, you're gonna enter the P block where you're gonna block off one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you're gonna get to row four where we're gonna enter the S block and you're gonna have one electron. There we go. So look at the largest energy level in lithium. It's a two. Do you know what that means? It means that if you had to draw the nucleus, then around the nucleus, so this is the lithium nucleus, around the nucleus, it's gonna have two energy levels, okay? For sodium, its highest energy level is a three. So if you had to go draw sodium, it would have a nucleus, and then it's gonna have three energy levels around that. Ooh, look at that. Now for potassium, it's got a highest energy level of a four. So it's gonna have a nucleus, and then it's gonna have four rings around it. So who's gonna be the bigger atom? Well, you can see for yourself what happens. But Kevin, you told us that when it has more protons, then it's gonna have a smaller radius. This one has 19 protons. Yes, guys, but remember, when I showed you that, we were looking at lithium, beryllium, and boron. In all of those, what was their amount of energy levels? All of them had two energy levels. Can you remember? They all had energy level two. So when you are in the same period, the energy level stays the same, and so, you don't get something like two energy levels and then three energy levels and then four energy levels. That's the big difference. So when you go down a group, the amount of energy levels becomes more. And so clearly we can see that the radius is becoming larger, okay? So yes, you could say that the potassium has more protons. That does have some type of effect, but it doesn't have that much of an effect compared with what we are seeing here where you're increasing the energy levels. Okay, so as you go down in a group, the size actually becomes larger. Whoops, that's not gonna work. The size becomes larger. And that's because as you go down, each row you go down, you're adding an energy level. Okay, now let's go make a summary on that. As you move down a group, the number of energy levels around the nucleus um, increases. This increases the atomic radius. Okay, so a quick little summary that you can remember. As you go down a group radius increases.
radius increases. Okay, now that we have th those two um, patterns explained, when you go from left to right, the radius becomes smaller because you're adding more protons, but when you go down, the radius becomes larger because you're adding more energy levels. Now we're going to do some examples where I'm going to give you two atoms and you need to be able to quickly identify which one is going to have a smaller radius. So what I want us to do is I want us to compare um, sodium and sulfur, okay? So we're going to compare sodium and sulfur. So here is sodium and here is sulfur. So are they in the same group or are they in the same period? Well, they're in the same period. Look, they're in the same row. So what are we going to look at? Are we going to look at the number of energy levels or are we going to look at the number of protons in order to help us? Well done if you said we're going to look at the number of protons. You only look at the number of energy levels when you go down the group. But when you go across a period, you look at the number of protons. So Na has 11 protons. Um, sulfur has 16. If you did have to go and do the electron configuration of each one, I'll do it for you quickly. But what you would end up with is for Na, you would end up with um, this over here. And then for sulfur, you would end up with um, this over here. And so what we can see, and we know this, is that because they are in the same row, they have the same amount of energy levels. This one's got three, and this one's got three. So we don't have to look at the energy levels because that's the same for both. But what we will now look at is the protons. So you see that Na has 11 protons, whereas sulfur has 16. So because sulfur has more protons, it's more positive in the nucleus, and so it pulls the electrons more closely towards the nucleus. And so which atom has the smallest radius? Sulfur has the smallest radius. Okay, make sure you understand that. Because it has more protons, it pulls the electrons closer. Because 16 protons is more strong than 11 protons. Because imagine you are an electron, okay, and you've got the sulfur, there's a, there's a sulfur nucleus, which has 16 positives, and you are an electron that's busy moving around. That 16 positive is going to pull your electron very closely, because 16 positives is very strong, and it's going to pull onto your negative electron. Whereas if you have Na, it only has 11 protons, so it's not as strong, and so it's not going to pull the surrounding electron as much. And so because these electrons here are going to be pulled closer, we're going to see that this atom is a little bit smaller. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, now I want us to compare, um, let's go with carbon and, or no, let's use um, beryllium and calcium. So beryllium is over here, calcium is over here. So now, are they in the same group or are they in the same period? They are in the same group. So what are we going to use to try and work this out? Are we going to look at their protons or are we going to look at the number of energy levels? Well, well done to you if you said number of energy levels. You're not going to look at protons now. Okay, so if you had to look at the electron configuration of beryllium, you would get um, 1s2, because that's the first row, and then you would get 2s2. Two, and that would give you that part. Now, if you had to look at calcium, I'm just going to do it quickly, but you can check for yourself. You would eventually get 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and 4s2. So beryllium only has two energy levels because it's in row two on the periodic table, whereas calcium has four energy levels because it's in row four on the periodic table. So if you had to go draw calcium, you would have to first put the nucleus and then you would have to put four energy levels around it. Look how big that is. Whereas beryllium, you would put its nucleus, and then you would only have to put two energy levels. You see, it's much smaller. And so which atom has the smallest radius over here? It would be beryllium. Okay, now the last thing I want to leave you guys with is you will not be able to compare the radius of something like this with something like that, for example. Why? Well, they're not in the same period, 
but they're also not in the same row. I mean, they're not in the same period and they're not in the same group. So there are too many variables at play and you won't be asked to compare that. Okay.